No Movies in Hell. I'm Chris Geiger. I'm Lil Claw Scott. And today we are revealing Pearl, the um, prequel to the movie X that came out earlier this year. Yes. And we did review X. So you can go back and reference that video if you want, either before or after watching this one. Yes. It's in the horror playlist too. Awesome. Easy reference. Um, so I was on the fence about whether I would see this there's no shortage of horror movies out right now uh, because we're going into Halloween um, so there were a couple I was mm, if there was only Pearl out then I would have gone to see it for sure but you know there's Pearl and Barbarian and so I wasn't 100% sold but you and I talked about it and you said Pearl is you've seen most of the horror movies yes you've oh, seen X <laughs> you should um, see it yes so I went last night. It was better than I thought it would be. Um, okay. You see? <laughs> and Mia God, I was really impressed by her, which I hadn't been super impressed by her in X or I guess previous in anything else I've seen her. I can't think of it, anything else I've seen her in. Yeah. I don't know if I've seen her in anything else either, but yeah. So yeah, I, I thought she was great. And the, the scene in the middle, like where she's talking to Tiffany, the sister-in-law, yeah, the sister. Oh, yeah, that was just such a great pivotal point. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, that was where, you know, it. if I wasn't a fan of the movie at that point, like it would have it turned me around. But I was. Yeah. I mean, I already thought it was. But yeah, that that part will win over, I think, anyone who's on the fence still at that point, because it is, I guess, more than halfway through. It's not yeah, halfway through. it's like the, the last third I really, I was surprised at how well, how I, how much I would like this film. I liked X. I thought it was like stylish, you know, whatever. But now knowing Pearl's backstory and like the relationship with her family, the relationship with her mom, like the other pandemic that happened like over a hundred years ago, I was like, oh, what a way to in- incorporate that into the film yeah. and kind of like the isolation, the loneliness and like kind of like that duty, like she had to be there to take care of her family and you know this was kind of the way but her mom knew something and really couldn't tell her outright like you know what's going on or you know whatever her mom was just pretty much like stick to it you know etc etc um I always felt like this was kind of like a practice makes perfect type of movie and if as a a parent would say like oh well you're gonna go do this well you're not gonna win because you didn't practice and it was kind of I got that sense from her mom and then at some point I was like her mom's just being mean and I'm like oh wait no her mom's not being (laughs) (laughs) having that you know I don't know that that sense of self or the sense of uh of knowing your limitations knowing what you're interested in but also like I mean she's just a not unwell person (laughs) overall right and then the whole time I was trying to relate it to what happened what I knew happened in X and Mm -hmm. in X I felt like she's not that in X she didn't come across as that strong a character yeah for me until the very end of course but then and I kept like trying to relate that back like how would this this person that I'm seeing on the screen now as Pearl have become that person who was sort of in the background and willing to sort of, you know, share the spotlight with other people. I felt like there was a little bit of a disconnect there. Yeah. It was like, I think we knew that like she wanted to be a star or she wanted to be in film at some point. So I think it was one of those things of like, oh, these people are here with cameras, like I'm going to be on film. And then it just takes a turn because it seems like her husband is very complicit with the fact that she is a a murderer Uh, uh, and how they get to X, but like he's, I guess, accepting of a person that has done these horrible things um, and has traits for horrible things. Stylistically wonderful. And I I just felt so bad. I was like cracking up at the audition scene. I mean, (laughs) It's just oh, some good humorous moments. Well, the audition, yeah, like the, the everything in the audition, the whole thing seemed like almost a sitcom, right? Like what yeah. you would imagine a 1920s sort of thing would be if you were going to recreate it now, right? Yes. Like the woman who was the stage 
manager like she had her makeup was so wooden like it was like yeah. on to a doll's face right because it was it didn't even match like her skin tone like yep. that. and that was clearly done on purpose the whole audition thing each person was like a very specific character like caricature type. yeah yeah so I also liked the fact that everything was very it's her and her mom on this farm but everything is perfect mm -hmm. yes the cow is in the barn everything is real like the way I've they never, stacked the hay I was I've like oh wow like... that clean in my whole <laughs> life and I have seen a lot of barns so like everything is perfect and well maintained and and her dad has been apparently like that for a while yeah so just the two of them sort of fictionalized right just like the audition where each person's yes. character like this is what a barn would look like yep in an idealized scenario in 19 in the early 1900s yep yeah and it's it's funny because there was nothing that's really out of place until the in-laws come to bring food and it's one of those like you know, we're self-sufficient, but we're also very picture perfect because we don't need anything that's out like questioned uh, irregularity. And then when irregularity is questioned, then that's when like something just goes off. Oh, wow. Like, why isn't this perfect? Why isn't this this? And then it just goes off the rails. Also, if I have to go to a Halloween party this year, I know what I will be. Oh, really? <laughs> Are you gonna share or we'll we'll Girl. Wait. <laughs> Would that be like one of your costumes? No, I don't I I, I it's hard to imagine that I would need more than one. Like <laughs> I don't But know you don't do like the Friday, Saturday, Sunday thing? Because I think Halloween's on a Monday this year. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> if I go one place that requires me to dress up that's like a big halloween like that's once every 10 years maybe i i'm just not a big halloween person. we should do the halloween episode where you you dress up in your character and i'll dress up in in my halloween character yeah one of the characters i guess one of them <laughs> <laughs> awesome so let's pull up the slides so we both were a little bit similar slightly over average and yeah. um, overall, uh, you gave it, where did you go higher? Oh, cinematography. Uh, yeah, cinematography. I thought that the cinema cinematography was really well done. Like even the last the last shot of the film it, where the credits were rolling is just insane. It's just like you have to wait there and see it, what will happen. And it's just really, really funny. I was um, but I loved before. like the whole everything sweeping um you know is kind of very set in a a particular way i think that we spoke about and but, but overall i just thought it was really really good i did get some wizard of oz dorothy on a bike vibes at a yes. couple points i thought the cinematography was good i would i didn't give it a three i thought it was good for what it was the mm -hmm. uh, the acting, though, I definitely gave a three because even the people who, even the supporting characters, I thought were great. Oh, you yeah. Know, the father who's in the wheelchair, like he's so expressive, even within the limited the mom you can have. The mom, the sister in law, even the husband who comes back from war, like he doesn't oh, yeah. have very much interaction, but like <laughs> he's on it. Yep. So, yeah, it's great. Yes. If more horror movies were like this, I would probably like the genre a lot more. You know what? I was totally thinking about that when I said, when I mentioned like, you should actually go see it because it's not, it's weird. It's like, it's not that much of a horror film. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like on a, if you were to have a scale of horror from like one to 10 in terms of actual horror, it's probably like a two or three because it's, it's world building and rationalizing before you get to like I guess murder <laughs> right I think the thing that makes it it makes it less of a horror movie but m almost more of a horror movie is that it puts it in more into an understandable sort of real you don't have to suspend a lot of disbelief mm -hmm. it's very easy to see how someone who in this mindset 
could exist today or does exist today or many people who are very close to the edge of murdering people <laughs> out there <laughs> in real life right like all the people that you hear about like it's like one of those things where if you they say if you see one spider you probably have a hundred spiders in your house or whatever like yes if if you see one person who goes out on a spree there's probably a hundred people thinking about it right that minute but they're not yeah they haven't been pushed over the edge yet and so the thing that makes this truly horrifying is that it's so close to what could what people are actually going through like that mm-hmm. that's all of her feelings of inadequacy and like that come out in that table since uh scene yeah in some ways it's horror but it's like really terrifying yeah it's like yeah and it's relatable it's like the isolation yeah not feeling enough and feeling a lot of pressure to you know it's an unsafe place you know stay the status quo stay here be normal do you have anything to plug in this episode like nothing i guess what we would typically plug but i wanted to mention that I, I saw, I think yesterday, that RRR is being um, put out there for the Oscars. So they're definitely going for it. Yeah. With both <laughs> actors, if for best actor, uh, best direction, like the categories came out, I think tweeted about it yesterday. Um, so I thought it was really, really interesting that they're ready to go. And it's still selling out in, um, in certain venues too. That's you can awesome. watch it on Netflix, but people you know, prefer to have like a really, uh, a cinematic experience with others. So that's great. Yeah. I mean, definitely that is a movie that belongs on the big screen. (laughs) Do you have anything to plug? I do. Uh, so I just posted, there is um, a Korean movie at AMC 25, Empire 25. This weekend it's called Project Wolf Hunting. It's actually been picked for a couple of film festivals. I didn't hear anything about it prior to seeing it listed as showing this weekend. I know it's an action film. That's really kind of all I know about it. So if anyone is interested, uh, we're, we'll be going at two o'clock on Sunday. Looking forward to that. Yay. I'll awesome. be at Sundays on fire on Sunday. That'll yeah. be fun too. The last but one. It, yeah. Um, do you know what the theme is this weekend? No. Last time they played they showed a film that was like a Jackie Chan parody. So it was like kind of making fun of Jackie Chan and it had some element of like Die Hard and it had Jet Li in the film. So um, it was actually pretty good. I forgot the name of the film though. But um, (laughs) so this one is up for grabs. Hear that it's mind blowing. I feel like a lot of them are. Should be good. (laughs) Awesome. Well, we'll wait to hear more on that (laughs) all right thanks everyone see you next time see you next time bye